Welcome to We Plus You, straight talk about conscious business collaborations. And I'm real excited today because today I have a good friend with me, Manny Goldman. And he started RealGrowthWorldwide.com. And we're going to be talking today about how important it is to have collaborations, teamwork, and masterminds so you can be held accountable and really get what you want to have happen and your outcomes and your business. So welcome, Manny. Hi, thank you. So let's talk about some of the things you're working on right now. So share with me some of the things, and I want you to go back actually and share with the audience where you started in your business and in life. Wow. Yeah, That's I mean everyone, everyone started somewhere. You know, you didn't just like pop out of your mom's belly and all of a sudden, you know, run to your business. So like, you wow. know, start just share a little bit as to you know where you started. Like, where were your dreams? Like, where did you actually start and create your company? Well, entrepreneurship has been in my blood. I mean, my all my role models, my father, my mother, even uh, my, all my aunts and uncles, even my grandmother was a real estate agent, but all my family members are entrepreneurs. So for me, I was like in my blood. I didn't see that uh, anything else was a possibility. So I started businesses as much as, as young as a kid from going on vacation with my family and buying bracelets and selling it as a markup, you know, in, in, in middle school. I think it was, maybe it was even elementary school. So just, there's just so many businesses from the time I was just that yet young, even six years old all the way through currently. So it's been about almost a 30-year journey of entrepreneurship, and I've had so many ups and downs. Um, and the biggest, the biggest down that I had was when I was really this is just trying to do it for money. And what I found about 10 years ago, a little less than 10 years ago, was actually finding a bigger purpose for the, for the business. So when, I, when it was just about money, there would come a time where there would be a, a challenge or a circumstance where it was a defining moment for the business. And I was like, you know what? I don't care enough about this business to go through that. So I would you know, sabotage or, or move on to the next business. So like I said, it wasn't until more recently that I got into more of a passionate or purpose-driven business. And it wasn't really necessarily a smooth sailing since then, but it was that determination um, that, that led me to never give up. I, I've been working on, which we'll talk about in a little moment, a website called realgrowth.com, which is really a tech startup, and uh, it's been a dream for over eight years. And I said, you know, disappointment is acceptable, but defeat isn't. So, you know, no matter what trials and tribulations I've been through, I've decided to start, uh, you know, overcome and persevere through them because of where I wanted to go, no matter what would happen. Now, you said something that was key, and I really want to address this. When we do something just for the money, yes. and that's what people I, I don't think they really get. You have to find a passion in your heart. If you do something just for the money, you will find that you either get burnt out or somewhere along the line you will sabotage and you will fail. And I don't mean just fail. I mean you will literally get so burnt out and so defeated, you'll be at your knees. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a really funny thing. I don't think people, I mean, millionaires and people that are really famous will tell you that, that they really will get to the point where they'll really, they just will have this epiphany where they're just truly not happy. All the houses, all the cars, and all the money in the world is not going to bring you the happiness. You're not going to be happy. So really find your purpose, really find what you're passionate about, and that will really, that really will find you the abundance and I don't think people really realize that. They think that they have to sacrifice their core values. And you don't. Find what you're happy out and, and work at it. And you'll find that, that will actually bring you the abundance. It will. It's just I think a lot of people, we've been sold that we have to sell out to also have the abundance. And you really don't have to do that. So I'm really glad that you brought that up. Thank so you. now go back to some, now continue from where you left off. Yeah, so really, I mean, it came, like I said, uh, it really came down to uh, se selecting something. It doesn't just because I selected a purpose and passion doesn't mean that all of a sudden success came to me. It's still, uh, still a journey. And like you said, when you're on your knees, which you will be <laughs> either way, uh, you decide to get up. You decide to persevere through it. You decide to embrace it more and uh, that's that's what's happened so you know for example I've made a lot of money in real estate and in six years ago it was a real estate crash and I lost it all and I had to, I had the decision of am I gonna continue in real estate or not and really I didn't like it it really wasn't I just following the trend you know following the money making opportunity that was there and it was a defining moment for me because I decided you know so many people were telling me to file bankruptcy and I decided that the person I'd have to become in order to pay back the money 
and be, become stronger and become uh, more money conscious uh, by, by paying everybody back, then that's what I decided to do rather than file bankruptcy. So in the last six years, I've paid back more than $300,000 uh, rather than pay, file bankruptcy. And I'm just telling you that just to understand the level of integrity or authenticity um, that I'll bring to this call, but also that I, that I, how, how important it is to me to really live your truth and be true. You don't have to hit the reset button because things will happen. So just that goes for any business that you're in. If you're, if you're in hard times right now, know that if you stick with your integrity, you stick with your values, that you will find a way. It's one of those times when you cut, and you cut corners and you, you do things that you really don't feel like you want to do, but you feel like you have to do it because people are telling you that you have to do this. I just want to just make a quick shout out for you to be true to, to your purpose and your vision and to your values and what's really in, uh, in integrity for you. Now, there's another really valuable thing that you brought up is I tell people over and over and over again, don't sweep things under the carpet. Mm. You have to tell your truth because whether you know it or not, you know, it is going to come out. Things do come out. It's like my clients know I've had 28 surgeries. My clients know that I grew up with X, Y, and Z. And that's why I've actually written the story of, you know, SOS to CAT. You know, so it's kind of like you have, you know, you have to be honest with your clients. And here's the thing. My past has made me who I am today. Those strengths have actually enabled me to now coach my clients from that place. You know, is that who I am now? No. Obviously, the past is not who I am now. However, those strengths, now I can actually use those strengths to coach my clients and say, hey, you know, I've been there. I can, and I can actually empath and say, yes, I've been there. And oddly enough, I'm actually speaking on a telesummit, and my topic is, Never ever give up. There is always a way. And that's the thing. People need to understand. Yes, there's always a way. And part of the problem is, you know, we're, we're, we're teaching people sometimes from a place, a lot of these courses people are buying from a place of desperation. And the problem with that is when, if people are buying a course from a place of desperation, they're seeking for the magic cure or the magic bullet. You know, like I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that magic pill. And there really isn't a magic pill or a magic bullet, if you will. It's like you have to be willing to do the work. And I'm always telling my clients over and over again, you have to meet me halfway. I can't do the work for you. I'm willing to collaborate with you. I'm willing to do the work with you. You know what I'm saying? That's why I wanted to have this call with you because I know that you get that. I know that you get how important it is to have collaboration. Well, I can talk to me. Collaboration is my favorite word, by the way. So <laughs> when you said it, I got, all, I got all excited inside. What happened was, just to give you a little background of why collaboration is so important to me, is because I've had the opposite of collaboration. I've tried, uh, and I, I, I push. <laughs> I'm, I'm a recovering pusher. So I, I push to go and get my goals and dreams, and I've always been uh, an inspired, determined person, and by doing it on my own, I've crashed in every area of my life. I was obese, I was clinically depressed, I was more than $100,000, or actually more than a million dollars in debt in the real estate market. I've failed in every relationship, I haven't failed in every business, probably about 15, 20 different businesses, and I've also failed in multiple suicide attempts. So I'm telling you this is because the model of doing it on your own is guaranteed for failure. I promise you, failure is inevitable. Now, once you collaborate with others, meaning that <laughs> people help you, you help them, there's a, there's a collaboration, there's a looking for, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, is a win-win-win. Uh, one of my friends recently said, if it's not a, if it's not a win-win-win, I'm not in. So kind of a fun little quirky uh, thing to remember about collaborations. And I think that God or the universe and her infinite wisdom created collaboration uh, or created, created this, this little flaw in our brains or in our, in our ways of being because for, to allow collaboration. So let me tell you what I mean by uh, in our minds, really. It's when you're emotionally involved in something, your intelligence is down. Meaning that if you're, it's your life, your problem, your challenge, you don't have complete access to your intelligence, to your intuition, to anything because you're so emotionally involved. But other people, outsiders, can see more into what you do, what you, what, what you, you know, what, what, what needs to happen for you to get the results that you're after. It's just like if, if a friend or, or, or you know, girlfriend, guy friend, whatever, has a challenge, you're so quick to give them the, the, the advice and the, and the answer. But when it's your problem, your challenge, you can't. And that's the exact reason why we need to collaborate in order to succeed. 
I agree with that, and that and it is so true. That's why I wanted to talk with you because you just started this group and Facebook and and again, people from the outside can see in, and it is so important to have those groups to have people to hold you accountable. When people are when you put up on on a Facebook group, this is my end goal, and that's why I want to talk about the word goal. And this is my these are my outcomes. These are the things I'm choosing to have as outcomes, right? And then, and if you're putting that, and you're posting that on a wall, and you're saying by this date this is going to happen, and you don't have that happen, you're going to have 20 or 30 people saying, well, you know, what happened? And it's going to be really hard to, you know, have an excuse. So having people hold you accountable is really important. So those types of things are extremely important. It's easy when you're by yourself just to go, oh, I'm not going to go to the gym today, or Oh, I felt really bad, so I went and go and ate, ate I went and go and ate that uh, pint of ice cream, or I had that cookie, or I did this, or I did that. You know, when you have a group of people that you've chosen to write a contract to or sign a document to, it, it's not as easy to do that. And so, I think it's really important to have those list of outcomes or to have someone that you're choosing to hold each other accountable to. I think masterminds are brilliant for that. So I just think it's, you know, for me, having the outcomes and having the groups and having, just having the collaboration is brilliant. Well, let's talk a little bit about accountability. I mean, it's not the only benefit, but it is one of the biggest. I mean, there's no amount of discipline that can out-pull or outweigh uh, an accountability. And what I mean by that is that other people, you'd rather do it than let people down. <laughs> but I don't care how much discipline you have, there's going to be a, a breaking moment where you're not going to feel like it. You're just going to do, you know, your, your comfort zone is going to, going to kick in, you know, and you're going to be comfortable not to go to the gym. You're going to eat that ice cream, as you were saying, Carly. So accountability is key. Now, that can come in many forms. That can come in a public forum. That can come in accountability partnerships. That can come in mastermind groups. It can come in so many different forms. It's merely what it is is it's deciding what you want and sharing what you want with other people who can help you get it. So what these people can do is they can give you ideas. They can give you inspiration. We all need inspiration because sometimes we just don't feel empowered at the moment to do it. Introductions. I mean, imagine you could spend days, weeks, maybe even months finding, let's say, a graphic designer for one of your projects. But in minutes, somebody who's got a fantastic, you know, experience with somebody can give you a lead for it's, you know, for a graphic designer. That's just one thing. I mean, one of my desired outcomes that I posted on one on our on our private Facebook group right now is uh, as a weight loss goal. And I was shocked by the by the resources and the ideas. And I've been studying this topic for twenty something twenty plus years. I've struggled. With, I've lost and gained over five hundred pounds in the last twenty years. In the middle of probably twenty minutes, I've had five or six people share things with me that blew me away on how to on how to stay how to stay at, a, at, a, at how to get there first, and then how to maintain it. Because I can get there. I have plenty of discipline, but it's maintaining it over the long run that's harder for me. And these people shared like at um ancient wisdom with me from 5,000 years ago, some kind of Ayurvedic or, um, principles. That was just one, one principle that really, I think, changed my life significantly. So just a matter of, I, could, I spent 20 years in pain in 20 minutes to get, to get some new resources and freedom. I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> you do the math. 20 years or 20 minutes. <laughs> well, that's the brilliance about collaboration and masterminds is that you're having the wisdom of many people. Exactly. People that have studied, and that's why I also like about masterminds that you're choosing. I don't, you know, I know a lot of people will say this might be. Um, I, I like that you also get to choose. In other words, I also like the fact that you're choosing who you're. In other words, how can I put this? You know, you just sometimes you have to be a little bit picky about who you're putting in there. In other words, oh yeah, you know, you know, you want, you want. If you have a mastermind, it's all. Uh, what do you call it? Creatives. It's, gonna be, it's not going to be the greatest mastermind. You have to have a blend. In other words, because if you need to have a diversity. That way, you you can learn more. If it's all creatives, if it's all visionaries, if it's all bean counters, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. have to have a diverse mastermind. That's the other people need to take. In one other, so when I run a mastermind, I make sure that you have a diverse type of mastermind. That way, you can learn the best. You know what I'm saying? Correct. You know what I'm, you understand what I'm saying, right? Oh, absolutely. You don't want if you have more people that are just like you. Right. <laughs> that's it's not, not necessarily the best way. You want people who have mastered things that you struggle with. Right. And you've exactly. mastered things that they that they struggle with. 
Exactly. That, make, that, that makes it a, a really well, a really great mastermind so you can actually collaborate. So one yeah, of the, I, I was trying to stay away from being, well, how's the word I'm looking for? I mean, you know, uh, you don't want to think people, you don't want people thinking you're being discriminatory is what I'm trying to say. So well, I, was trying to, I, was, I was attempting to use my words carefully on that one. But you, you want to make sure when, you, when you're when you making your, your groups or you're choosing your masterminds, you really want to make sure that it's a diverse group because if, if it's all like you, you're, it's not going to work. And again, and it's also for them too. It's not just about you. It's obviously, it's always, now let's put it this way. It's always about the other people. It's not just about you. You want them also to get benefit. This is also about your teammates. You want them equally to benefit as much as you. So again, for them too, if everyone in the group is also like them, they're not going to learn either. So the point is, you want to make sure that the group is diversified for everybody to learn. And so you want to create it's like if you're a leader, you want to make sure that you create multiple, I call them groups or pods, so that each pod is equally balanced so each pod can learn properly. So I always make sure I'll take applications and I'll sort through the applications and separate the pods accordingly and I'll actually have a, an application that I actually can look through go, okay, in this pod I'll actually look through them and I'll do a little, I have an intake form so I can actually see by the intake form if they're visual, they're kinesthetic, what their skill sets are, and I'll actually start sorting them through into pods so that everyone can learn properly and actually get the best resources. So it does take some filtering and, and at least if you're if you want to you know if you want to take the time to do that. Well, I want to challenge those who are listening to be very selective. This isn't like you know your family, right? You don't necessarily choose your family. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in your masterminds and your accountability partners, which we can talk more about if you if you're unclear what they are, I think I'm happy to do that too. But I want to encourage you to be very selective and take your time to select them. Doesn't mean you, you take forever, but you should be selective of finding out what's the synergy between what I have to offer and what I need, and what they have to offer and what they need. So that it's very important. There's many types of uh, mastermind groups. For example, some of the oldest ones that I've been able to find in history was Benjamin Franklin had something called a Juno, and basically, uh, you know, it was it was just like we're talking here. It was a collaborative uh, group of men at that time who met to talk about their their business dealings, or I think they may even had some of their personal dealings in there as well. So it's like an outlet to be able to flush out this is what's going on in my life, and this is what I need, and this is what I'm finding at works. And I tell you that that collaborative environment is, is unbelievable. The other I was able to find is Andrew Carnegie. You know, the, the, he he became by the turn of the century he became the richest man in the world, and he inspired uh, Napoleon Hill to write "Think and Grow Rich." And his book, you know, he he had a mastermind of 50 people, you know, at the very least, that their whole sole purpose was to help him build the largest steel company in the world and he did it and he achieved it so could he do it alone no <laughs> he was able to do it with his, with his mastermind group of 50 more, more people plus a, a great team which becomes a mastermind to be able to fulfill on a purpose a passion whatever your business is it could be a nonprofit it doesn't matter what it is it's a, it's a team of people that have one purpose one mission involved uh, and I, I know a lot about I have a virtual team now just just heads up I have 12 people in five different countries that all work on one you know Together and one, one and fairly unison <laughs> to uh, for one common purpose and goal. So, uh, I know a lot about creating masterminds and account, you know, and all and, and teams of people. And I love it. I do the same thing. I'll actually put up. I'll put up a. I actually do a lot of Facebook times. I'll put up a, a banner of some kind saying, "Okay, I'm looking to put together this type of mastermind." And I'll, I'll put it up for different masterminds. And then I'll get people that inbox me and say, "Hey, I'm interested in this mastermind." I'll send them the application. Uh, that I've created, which is kind of like a multi-sensory 38 intake form, 38 questions, and then I'll see if they're a fit. And that, that's what I'm saying. It's like, don't just take anybody. Make sure it's a fit. Um, and I know that sounds kind of not very nice, so you just, you just really want to make sure people are fit. And um, and if they're not a fit for that particular mastermind, then maybe fit for another one. You just really want to make sure, and because they, they really want to make sure you, that they want to do the work. Cause that's, the other, that's the other problem, is that they have to want to do the work and participate. If you have a group, and I've had this happen where you have people that come into a mastermind and they don't want to participate or they don't show up for the calls, and that's not really fair to the other people. It's like they really have to want to participate and show up. If they're not going to show up, then it's not a match. It's like you, you have to want people to, to participate, and that's part of the collaboration. If you are going to be in the mastermind or if you're going to be in the group, 
You're going to want to have people that are actually go in there, they're going to actually look in the group, they're going to actually make comments, they're going to participate, they're going to cheer people on, they're going to, they're going to want to participate. That's the whole point. Otherwise, you don't really want them in the group. They're going to, you want people that are actually going to want to volunteer and donate some of their time. And obviously, everybody's busy. Everybody, and that's the other thing. It's like I always tell people, how many groups are you involved in? If you're involved in so many groups on Facebook, you know, we don't have a zillion hours a day. So, you know, I'm not involved in a zillion groups on Facebook. I have one or two or three core groups I'm involved in, and the other ones I may drop in every once in a while. However, I have like one or two or three, actually I think it's three groups. Yours is one of the primary ones, and I have one other one that I actually manage, and I have like one other one that I drop in now and again. It's like if you're involved in so many groups, you, you're not being of service to them, and it's not fair. So, you know, you really have to manage your time effectively. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Let's talk a little bit about formats of how you would create an uh, accountability partnership or a master grind group. And, well, really, <clears throat> some of the formats really is about a collective, a group. So it's like you cl you're you very clear on what it is that you want, and you, and you share that. And maybe on, on certain calls or certain Facebook groups, you might say, Here's my challenge. Here's my circumstance. What do you think? Do you know somebody who does this? How can, can you help me with this? You have to be willing to ask. That's really, 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 really important. Because what's cool, I realize, is that the giver, the person who's actually giving to you when you ask, gets sometimes a greater gift if not a, uh, by giving to you. So what I mean by that is, like, let's say someone has a challenge. I'm able to see their challenge objectively. Okay. So when I have that own, my own challenge, I can't give myself that advice. So I can't tell you how many times I've had massive breakthroughs by giving someone else advice in my, for, for my own life. So that's one huge thing I can tell you. And the other is when you're, when you're collaborating, what happens is when you ask, when you're willing to ask, the group starts chiming in and giving you ideas. And there's a synergy effect that happens where all of a sudden the value of the group's feedback and the feed, what happens is the, the – the overarching idea that comes up from multiple people rather than just one is extremely powerful. So one person would say something and say, oh, well, what about this? Oh, have you thought of this? And what about this? And before you know it, the outcome of where you get to, <laughs> if you never spark that conversation with those brilliant people, you would never be able to get to that outcome on your own because of the collaboration effect. You see this online a lot of times with crowdsourcing. Uh, look, if you have, I'm not going to get too much into crowdsourcing now, but if you just look that up online, it's really uh, basically how the crowd is much stronger than the individual. So but the key is, is knowing what you want, asking for what you want, and then, of course, being, a, being a, a valuable member of the community by giving. Most people feel more comfortable giving than receiving, unfortunately. That's why there's a majority of people who are wealthier than, than others, just because they're willing um, to receive as well as give, but that's a, that's a bigger conversation. So those are pretty much the three elements to any successful you know, collaboration, at least in a mastermind or accountability format, is knowing what you want, asking for what you want, and then giving to those who hopefully ask as well. Now, how do you how do you ask if you don't know what you want? So one thing you could do is one of your first asks is, I don't know what I want. Can you help me decide and determine what I want. So that's some of the quick format on on that. Now, the difference of accountability partnership versus a mastermind is accountability partnerships usually is on, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So I would have accountability partnerships where a person has struggles in, let's say, in their business, and I struggle in my health. And that person is master in their in their health, and I'm a master in business. So what I mean by there is there's like a perfect synergy where I can help them in one area of their life, and they can help me in one area of my life. So that's usually where I don't usually go to you know a family member or a friend. I go to somebody who I know has a mastery on something that I have a challenge with, and I know that I can help them in something very specific. So it's a, it's a very quick. It could be a daily check-in, a weekly check-in, a monthly check-in, where you're very clear on this is what I'm going to get done. This is what I need. They give you a bunch of ideas, resources, and you're over and out. I mean, a lot of people are busy, right? We're all busy. The funny thing is that we're, a lot of us are busy trying to figure out on our own. You could actually be less busy <laughs> if you get the collaboration and support from others because you'll actually move faster and it'll be much easier and you can spend the rest of the time playing. So I can tell you from experience of somebody who has a lot of gray hair, as you can tell, and I'm only in my, my early 30s because I've spent 20-plus years pushing and pushing and pushing and trying to do it on my own. I can tell you that's not the way to the easiest and happiest, most aligned success. And, 
the account, there's in adding to the accountability partnerships, there's all sorts. There's ones that have daily check-ins, like you said. There are yep. email check-ins, like Lily, the, the, every day they check in and say, okay, I've, I've actually done whatever the accountability part, part of it is. There's, like you said, weekly. Um, I found that the most serious ones that do literally daily email check-ins, it's like a, like a two-second email check-in where they've actually done whatever that task is for, for whatever the daily email accountability is. Those are for the really serious people, especially the health ones where they actually are doing uh, gym stuff and uh, the eating part. Those are more of the daily ones. Actually, let's get into you, your project that you're working on because uh, yeah. you know that's... I think a pretty big one. So why don't, why don't you share a little bit about the project that you've created? Thanks for asking. Really what it is is I've always had a, a passion and purpose to create a, a large community that would help people uh, create and live life, create, design, create, and live a life they love. So after eight years of trying to you know figure it out in so many different ways, uh, I finally first started to, 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 to focus in it. I like basically commit to it on a whole new level because there's so many unknowns <laughs> that I didn't know where, where to go with it. So uh, I committed to it about six months ago, and uh, we're in private beta version right now. But what it is is it's a crowdsourcing platform. Remember, we talked about crowdsourcing before briefly. And the most popular forms of crowdsourcing right now are crowdfunding platforms where you can go and raise money. So you have a project for your business, for example, and you want to raise 10000 5000 100000 whatever the amount that you want, the crowd can actually donate money to you, $5 at a time, $100 at a time, 1000 at a time, whatever they want to do. So I, I, I saw these platforms. I'm like, wow, what's possible? If we could actually take that similar or same technology, but help people achieve their goals and dreams much faster and more easily. So what we did was, um, I'm actually doing it now on a, on a private Facebook group, which Carly is a part of, and what she alluded to a few times. And basically, what people do is they they declare a desired outcome. You know, these crowdfunding campaigns they call them projects or campaigns. Here we call them desired outcomes. So anything in your personal life, your business life, or even anything spiritual, you can decide what it is that you want. Let's say I want to release 30 pounds this month. Or, <laughs> that's a lot. Or this year. Or I want to take my business from you know 10,000 a month to 20,000 a month. And based on that, we actually people will collaborate with you. They might give you ideas, inspiration, introductions to help you achieve that. We even have monthly games where whoever wants to achieve a, you know a very specific goal in a given month. We, you're part of this game, and the, the only way to win the game is if everybody participating meets their desired outcome for the game. So it's like it's all about how to collaborate and connect with each other to achieve our goals, um, and live. It's really about living a life we love. Because I've I found through so much of my pain and struggle, uh, there was no no understanding of how life works. <laughs> like how does life work? How do we design? How do we actually be consciously create our life? I really felt that life was against me. I didn't know how to how to create the life that I wanted. I just felt like I had, there was no way. There was no way to do that. So my, my, and I also felt very alone. So why I do what I do is for two main reasons. Is One is to actually never feel alone and hope that no one else ever feels alone. And the other is how do you create consciously create a life that you love, that you actually design and you create. But we can't do it alone. Remember we talked about that we're just, we have the stigma. We're actually so boxed in by ourselves. So that's kind of a, in a long, long shot of how, you know, of why we're doing it and what we're doing. And I was actually just got the stats uh, for the last 30 days. We had 125 desired outcomes posted, which I was so excited about, and 946 comments. That's about eight comments per desired outcome of collaboration. And then about 26 people who participated in our September game, which was a you know a fly by night quick idea that I decided to test. So it's going better than I expected, and people are meeting their goals. I just achieved one of my desired outcomes for the, for the month of September, which was to complete a seven day green juice cleanse that uh, I did seven days without eating, like you know tan like physical food, you know, it's just juices and stuff, which is actually you know delicious. But after a while, <laughs> it starts getting getting a toll on you, and I would never probably would have never completed that on my own. So you know, having that environment, having that group uh, of people. And it's completely free right now. So, you know, we're not going to launch to the public until about mid-December, early January. So there is a notification list that you can, you know, check out and be a part of. But I can tell you, and Carly, you can speak for your, your, your experience, but I'm impressed and inspired by people's vulnerability, uh, the people who actually share of their heart and of, of, of their truth are getting the most value. We have weekly mastermind calls. We do two every Thursday. And the people who come on those calls and share themselves and say, hey, I need help. 
you know, you see these flocks of people come to them and give them give them ideas, inspiration, inspiration, introductions, and it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. So now, since this also is a podcast, can you tell people where they can actually go to find out more about this? Simple, yeah. www.realgrowth.com. R E A L G R O W T H dot com. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, since um, yeah, we have our lower thirds, and that's the video part. I just wanted people to know, since this is a podcast, where they also can find out where to go. And my experience um, in being in the group has been that people have been very helpful. They have posted, you know, everyone is communicating with, the, with each other. Anytime anyone posts what their desired outcome is or anything new, they immediately go on. They're sharing with each other immediately. Um, when I posted my new ebook cover, they immediately came on and said, oh, we like this one better. When, we, when I changed it, put the new one up, they liked that one better. When I just posted that, I just, you know, uh, had a new telesummit come up. They are like, oh, I, I, I think you should only put that it's for, you know, X amount of days instead of, you know, this amount of days. So people, they're, they're very supportive. They jump in right away. Um, you know, I, I met my first, uh, my first desired outcome, which was to get the cover done. It is done. We're interviewing awesome. actually today at 4:30, um, right after uh, in a couple hours. Actually, I'm being interviewed with Miriam about the ebook, and it is being launched on time. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm, I'm meeting mine. Um, so yeah, I mean everyone's just really supportive, and they you know they immediately come on and and make suggestions, and I think the group is is pretty amazing. I mean they they're I think they really do. They rally. They communicate. Which I think is what the important part is. I mean, I think that's what the groups are for. I mean, I think it, I think that's a very tight group. It's not too overwhelming. It's not too huge. That's the other thing about what I find in groups. If the groups are too huge, it can be a little bit overwhelming, and then nothing gets accomplished. So I don't think the group is too small. And I don't think the group is too huge. That's the other thing of the balance. You know, um, I think some, and I also think that. You're moderating it nicely. I think that's the other problem. If you don't have a leader in the group, mm -hmm. they don't work. You have to have someone that's in there and moderating and leading the group. If there's no leader or no moderator, it doesn't work. I run yeah. a group, and I know um, I ran, actually ran several groups, and I've done experiments where I wasn't in there as much, and when I was in there daily, at least three times a day, and when I was in there daily and then there three times a day, it was running awesome. People were communicating. The tasks were getting done. People were sharing. Blah. And when I wasn't in there as much, the, it, the, the activity was dropping. People weren't sharing as much. This is a social media group. And it's amazing what happened between the two groups. One actually diminished, and we wound up closing it down. And the other one is flourishing and going like crazy. So having, having a leader and someone that actually is moderating and in there makes a huge difference. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I want to just encourage people that don't be f f scared of being the leader. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, if you think about, oh, I don't have the time or, oh, it's too much responsibility, I can promise you that the leader actually gets probably most of the value um, because you're actually getting so much gratification of something that you created that you're that you're a part of. And people want to act, all of them want to support you because of, you're the, you know, you're the creator, you're the leader. So I want to encourage you to create groups. And if you don't want to, there's plenty of groups that you can join. But if you find yourself complaining like, oh, I don't have a group, and I don't, uh, you know, I, I wish I had this, I wish I had that, just go and create it, <laughs> you know. So you can do it based on obviously your Facebook and Google groups and Yahoo groups and such. You have meetup.com, M-E-T-U-P.com, as, as other groups. You can join our family at realgrowth.com. And you can also have conference calls with people that you know or people that you know who know other people also. So you can spark the idea to like a few of your friends and ask them to invite their friends. So this is that way you're getting out of your own network. So there could be a full conference call um, mastermind. It doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, an online type of thing. Or it could even be in person. Many people, uh, imagine that it actually exists these days, right? Uh, many people meet in person all over the world to do these groups. So, you know, it's, the sky's the limit on that, you know. Um, the, some of the formats you might do is, you know, multiple people collaborating at the same time. You can have a mastermind group just for your business. Like, you might think that's weird. But think about it. It's like an advisory group. Or board of directors. I mean, that's pretty much a mastermind group. So people would be honored to be able to meet meet other like-minded people, be able to help you and learn a lot by helping you. So one of the biggest things that people run into in collaboration is they think, oh, I don't want to inconvenience anybody, and that's actually not an inconvenience. <laughs> you know, if you're thinking win-win-win, 
then it's never an inconvenience because you're actually looking at it, what's in it for them, what's in it for you. It's win-win for all of us. If they believe in your mission or purpose, right? If they're inspired by you, you know, crowdfunding alone, which is a subsegment of crowdsourcing, has raised five billion dollars, or will be in 2013. It's forecasted five billion dollars, and we're talking about this all oh, this economy challenges and all that stuff. BS. People will will support you financially, their time, their resources, if they're inspired by what you're creating. So. Sharing is a, is a key, you know, is a really key thing. Now, one thing we could talk about, uh, Carly, also, if we have time or if you want to, is joint ventures. You know, I, I built my entire business pretty much on joint ventures. I used to be a joint venture broker, and that's just another form of collaboration. So I don't know if it's something that you're, that you're interested in. Or no, absolutely. One thing I do want to bring up, too, is really important, is people don't get is there's tons of free tools. Google Hangout is free, and you can have up to 10 people. And there are companies now that are actually doing board meetings. They're actually bringing on, like you just mentioned, you know, what you were just saying about having a mastermind. You can actually have up to 10 people on a Google Hangout, and it's free. And as long as you're on a Chrome browser, you're not going to have any issues with sound. Mm -hmm. Now, before when they were just developing this, there were some sound issues. Now that they've actually gone HD, and they, they, as long as you're on a Chrome browser, you can have, actually have 10 people on here. So, I, you know, it's like when people say to me, oh, I don't have the money, and, you know, there's issues, and da-da-da, you know, there's really less and less excuses why you can't do things like this. There's Skype. There's, I mean, there's lots of different ways. I personally have found this to be a really good tool, and it's, it's free, and I have I found no sound issues. Um, occasionally, you might have a little bleep. It's really rare, and I love it. So, I mean, there's tons of tools that are free. So the excuse of, the, for me, when people tell me they can't do something, I find that there really aren't any excuses anymore. There's so much technology now that's free. There's even teleconference lines that are free. So technology aside, find a tool that you can use. There's tons of them out there. I'd love to talk about joint ventures. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, a joint venture can be taken in so many different ways. So, a, the typical joint venture is really just a a, de a collaboration. It's a deal between two companies, or it could be more than two, um, that work out an arrangement that benefits both parties and ideally both their customers, right? So, so this uh, I, I've had very. Uh, let's talk about it in my own business. I'm in, I'm in information marketing, um, also in internet marketing, and one thing that I've done as a broker and also in my own business is bring two parties together. So. Two, peop two parties that can actually help each other. That this is a, as it actually was a business of mine. So if you're looking for another business opportunity, this could be one. If you, if you're if you love to connect people and and see opportunities, this can be one of them. So two parties actually um, endorsing or promoting um, each other's products to their own customer database, and we call that also affiliate marketing. That's just one simple form of of, of a joint venture. Two parties. They have, they have similar products that serve a similar demographic or the same demographic or same similar products, and they promote for each other. Hey, this is an awesome product for my, for my colleague John. Check it out, and vice versa. It's a, really a shortcut way to, do, you know, to, to sell more, more of your products and services, so, and you pay on results only, which is kind of fun uh, in, you know, in that nature. So that can happen where a chiropractor you know, aligns you know, with a therapist, or th and a therapist refers a chiropractor. It's kind of, you know, the, that, that's a joint venture where they're endorsing each other. They're, they're promoting each other to each other's clients and, and database. One thing I did recently, which I thought was a you know, creative joint venture, and it also ended up being a passive income stream for me, is I, someone uh, that in my life, she's part of my, my, I have another website called It's All About Women. She was part of my team, and she kept asking me, listen, if there's any other, any other opportunities that you, that you know, please let me know. So she said, said this to me about five or six times. So I finally decided to take her up on it, and I trained her on how to be an, uh, an advertising sales rep. And you know the details aren't important, but you can kind of see how, how the deal comes together. Um, and I found out, you know, I discovered months later that I didn't really want to manage, you know, an advertising sales rep. So what I did was I actually brokered a deal where I introduced her to a friend of mine who owned an, an advertising agency. She became a sales rep for them, and I get a small commission of every sale she makes. So look at the joint venture. I can, she she wanted to, uh, you know a, a, a be in, in, a, in a business or have have a new opportunity. This company obviously wanted more sales reps to do more business, and I would I would love to have a passive income stream. So I created a triangle joint venture deal where all parties involved 
win in the arrangement. So when you're creating these joint venture deals, there's really no sky's the limit of what can be created or the specifics of the deal. All I say to you is that always look for win, win, win. Always, always, always. If there's if there's if there's less than three wins, something's off. Okay. So it's at least, in my opinion, three, minimum two, but ideally three win win wins all the way around. You can never go wrong if you're looking for all parties. Yourself has a lot of times we do deals that sacrifice ourselves. Don't do that. <laughs> we also do deals that are only for us and we forget to think about what they need. A lot of times you might have to ask them what they need. Because if you assume what they need, that's a that's a big mistake. A colleague of mine recently um, was assuming uh, what someone else needed, and that's a big mistake. So think win, win, win. Of course, I can go deeper on it. Just up to Carly if you want to ask me any questions on if I wasn't clear on something, or if you want to go deeper in something specific. I think that was really specific in terms of people understanding what joint ventures are. I think joint ventures are, you know, I think a lot of people don't don't understand what joint ventures are, but I think you explained it pretty well. So I think that was really good, and um, I think I'm. I think that was pretty well explained in terms of joint ventures. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a way to jump start. It's like this whole collaboration thing. <laughs> if you're by yourself, I guarantee you're going to be limited with your resources, your, your, your knowledge, your experience, your, account, your, your willingness to go past a certain comfort zone. So collaboration is key. I just gave you about three or four different versions of collaboration. So always think we. I'll say to take this little, this little scale that I've created. It's kind of a um, – think of we in the middle. And to the far left, you have you, and the far right, you have me. So what happens is a lot of times you have a group of people who are just about them, and you have a group of people who are usually just about somebody, everybody else but themselves. But there's an opportunity for us all to win, all of us, in any deal and in the, in the whole world as, as, a, as a whole. So that's kind of my altruistic and my you know, idealistic viewpoint. But I really believe that when we work together, we all win. So that could be in teams. That could be in... Individuals think about it. we're all alone. But we're all alone together. Well, so, as you see my logo, it says we are all interconnected. So that's mm. the thing we need to understand too. Is like it, and 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 as in sales, it's never about us. It's always about them. We really need to get out of the mindset about being about us. If you really do want to create abundance, you really need to get to understand it's about them. So and I mean yes, it is a, obviously. What we need to understand too is the more that we help others, whether you understand that or not, energetically it does come back to you. So you really need to understand that we are all interconnected, and the more we do give, just by the law of nature, you're going to get it back. So yes, you do obviously in your mind you're thinking about yourself. However, you really need to understand that you know it is about other people, and the more you understand that, the more it's going to come back to you anyway. And so, yes, you want to make sure it is a win-win-win all the way around. And that is naturally going to happen when you start thinking about other people. So yeah, I I'll, agree, I'll, you know. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I'll leave you with a great quote. It's from the late, great uh, Zig Ziglar. It says, if you help enough people get what they want, you're inevitably, I'm paraphrasing, you're inevitably going to get what you want. So, you know, if you're concerned about your finances or anything else in your life, just look at how many people you're actually helping, and you'll see potentially a gap in what you're receiving by by what you're giving. So it's it's an interesting dynamic. So I hope that I was inspired to give you at least one idea that you'll take on to collaborate more. Because remember, when we all work together, we all win. Absolutely. And we're going to end with that because that is that is exactly what collaborations is all about. And I, I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be with me. It was absolutely amazing to catch up. We haven't seen each other physically as a face-to-face -face <laughs> in a very long time. That's so it's really awesome to see that beautiful face. Oh, Please make you. sure you give love to the beautiful goddess and um, mm -hmm. hugs to the beautiful children. Thank you. And Thank you. Just, I'm really excited to see you in the group and, and, see, and see your face on Facebook. And I'm really excited to see your project grow. And just, you know, just a lot of love and hugs and um, just really excited to have you on this call. So please make sure, you, um, please tell everybody where they can find you once again, please. Sure. Uh, realgrowth.com is our main, uh, our main site for the project I was telling you about. But the bigger, the bigger, the company website is realgrowthworldwide.com, which includes my other site I was telling you about. It's all about women. And it's just been really exciting to watch you grow. Um, I've been watching Manny grow for a long time now. Just watch him personally grow and business-wise grow. And um, yeah, it's just been a really, it's been a great journey. It's been, it's been a long time. And thank you, everybody. As you know, I love to bring you valuable content. I will be putting together a page as usual, which will have an embedded video and embedded, an embedded podcast with everybody's links. 
and you've been with your host Carly Lissa Thorne and you can find me at CarlyLissaThorne.com and as usual it is good night for now and I look forward to bringing you more contact next week so good night everybody have a wonderful night bye thank you Carly thank you so much Manny <laughs>